Well, we hope you had a Merry Christmas. And I guess now it's appropriate to say Happy New Year. Uh, at least we'll get it in once before the New Year. Uh, we are glad you are here this morning. Uh, take your Bibles with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. While you're turning there, uh, we will be finishing this, uh, uh, really this short series, about a three-week series. Uh, we had a couple weeks here where we had a break uh, with our cantata and children's program. And then this morning we'll be finishing up the thoughts I have here from God's Word. Uh, excited to be able to preach this this morning. And I hope it'll be a help and encouragement to you and a challenge as well as we look at God's Word uh, here today together. Uh, but I do, as I said a moment ago, do hope you had a very Merry Christmas. And uh, I know the Lord is just, uh, uh, his blessings seem to rain down every day, don't they? Uh, he is a good God. And we are so very grateful to uh, serve him. And just, I will say a thank you again to the church uh, on behalf of me and my wife and then the Dahlquist as well, uh, just for your gift to us. Uh, folks, you are just a tremendous blessing and uh, we love you. Uh, we love serving with you and uh, your gift was just uh, uh, above and beyond uh, meeting our needs. So we very much appreciate that. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, if you would, verse 6. I would like to read this one more time down through verse 15 uh, just for some context again. I really remember this is dealing with the, the cheerful giver and then we'll see how this then flows into uh, our unspeakable gift. But verse 6, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, but this I I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. For God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both ministereth bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Verse 11 will continue. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. Isn't that something? Even the great blessings God rains down should cause you and I to be thankful. That's what that verse is telling us. God is so good. God is so gracious. He enriches us in everything should cause us then to be thankful back to him. Verse 12, for the administration of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgiving unto God. Whilst by the experiment of this ministration they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men. And by their prayer for you, which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you. Look at verse 13 now. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. The title of this message, as it was here for the last couple of weeks, is just simply thanks be unto God. But we've been discussing this unspeakable gift we realize here in Scripture that this gift is not just something, but it is someone. And that someone is the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the unspeakable gift. You see, we talked about this, and I'll just give you some here review in our first few minutes this morning. When we see this word unspeakable, it really has a literal meaning of that which cannot be fully declared. When we begin to contemplate, when we begin to examine the greatness, the glory of Jesus Christ for moments in our life, it ought to render us speechless. It's that great. It's that immense. Jesus Christ in his person alone. Boy, we have much to be thankful for. It is an unspeakable gift. We talked then, and we'll review here again, we talked then how God's gift of Christ comes 
from an unspeakable love. Right? This very unspeakable gift, the gift of Jesus Christ, comes from an unspeakable love. And that's the love of the Father. And you know these verses well. John 3, 16, for God so... That's an unspeakable love, my friend. For God so loved the world that he gave the unspeakable gift. Isn't that something? That he gave Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You see the pattern here of God's love? You see the pattern here of God's grace and his mercy, wanting to redeem us, wanting to draw us back unto him for fellowship? It's because of the unspeakable gift. Not only is Christ the unspeakable gift, but as we said, this gift comes from an unspeakable love, love of our Father. Also then, we then talked about how uh, this gift of Christ involves an unspeakable sacrifice. We spent a whole service dealing with this and looking at the scriptures to see this in scripture. When we begin to think of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, when we begin to think of what he endured so that you and I could be saved... Boy, what an unspeakable sacrifice. When we begin to look at his life, when we begin to look at then at the cross and even before the cross as he was led to be beaten and whipped and scourged and the crown of thorns and the nails and all of the brutality of it, his blood freely being shed for you and I, letting himself be hung on that cross, dying for you and me. Boy, that's an unspeakable sacrifice, isn't it? And then obviously, as you know, he rose again. He's not dead, my friend. Tomb's empty. Listen, of all history, there's only one Savior. Of all eternity, there's only one empty tomb. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. He is alive today so that you and I could have eternal life. Now, as you heard these songs sung this morning, have you received the gift? You see, Christmas is over. Not for you if you haven't received Jesus Christ. Because there's one more gift that you just may get today, if you would so choose to. And that's to put your faith in the one that died for you and me. This unspeakable gift, this Jesus Christ that you're hearing me speak of this morning, this one that put his life on the cross, died for you and me and shed his blood, you see, that's the greatest gift of all. The gift to know that when you receive him as your savior, you can have eternal life. You don't have to go another day wondering what would happen to you if you died today. You see, I think about that all the time. You can, you can take care of that right now. You can take care of that today. You don't have to go another day wondering where you'll spend eternity. Listen, the Bible is very clear. You can know, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. You have to put your faith in Christ, in Jesus Christ. You have to put your faith and trust in him. You, just like I did, have to receive the gift. The gift is there. The blood's there. The blood's been shed. The Savior's risen. He's alive. The gift is there under the tree, if you will. Have you opened it? Have you received it? Have you made it your personal gift? Think of that sacrifice. We read this verse, I think, three weeks ago, Romans 8, 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. What an unspeakable sacrifice. We then looked at those scriptures where as Christ hung upon the cross, God the Father turned his back on his own son. Imagine that for a minute. Think of the gravity in that moment. You say, why would God do that? Why, would, why wouldn't God be there to encourage and support? Why wouldn't the Heavenly Father be there to, to, to just lift up his son? Listen, because of your sin and because of my sin. 
Jesus Christ bore not just the weight of our sin, but he bore our sin upon himself. And in doing so, the father couldn't look at his own son. That's an unspeakable sacrifice. That's an unspeakable gift. Boy, what a God we serve. You know, I think as a father of the sacrifice I would make for my son. And I think any of you in here today that are parents, you know, you would, you would, I would hope, believe that in that moment you would give your life for your child. But that's not just what Christ did for us. He not just gave his life, but look at the manner in which he gave it. Look at the manner in which he laid it down. It wasn't like, you know, he, you know, fingers were snapped and, you know, his breath just left him peacefully. Look at that crucifixion. Enduring that for you and me, that is an unspeakable sacrifice. That is an unspeakable gift. So again, you see this pattern. This pattern of God the Father demonstrating this unspeakable love and sending Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ being that unspeakable gift, then even in his own strength, showing us unspeakable love by giving of himself. So he didn't have to come, but he did anyway. And then you see then as we work through this, this message this morning, then that unspeakable sacrifice that was offered for you and me. Listen, there is power in the blood of Christ. It is the only thing that can cleanse you and I of our sin. And it was freely shed for you and me. That is an unspeakable sacrifice. What a Savior we serve. And then this morning for our new material today, God's gift of Christ, if received, brings about unspeakable results. Listen, if you receive the gift of Jesus Christ, if you make the Lord Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, you believe how we just said, you believe that he came and lived a perfect life, you believe that he died on the cross for you and he shed his blood for you, that his blood is sufficient to cleanse your sins, you believe he rose again, you call upon him, you repent of your sin, you make him your savior, Folks, then that unspeakable gift, that unspeakable love, then produces unspeakable results for you and I as his child. That's what I want to talk to you about this morning. Take your Bibles, if you would, and turn to Romans chapter 8, and I'll get there in just a minute. Romans chapter 8. Before I get there, though, I want to read you a couple other scriptures. As we look at how this is unspeakable results, John chapter 1 and verse 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You see, one of the unspeakable results of putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ is you become a child of God. That's something. Are you a child of God this morning? Say amen. amen. Think of that. You see, the world would have us think that everybody's God's children. That's not true. It's not what the Bible teaches. Everyone is God's creation. What makes you his child is by you receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. What makes you a child of God is your relationship with Jesus Christ. So this unspeakable gift produces an unspeakable result. And the Bible gives it to all. It says, but as many as received him, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. If we receive Christ as our Savior, we become a child of God. Boy, what a position. The God of the universe 
The God of this universe is your heavenly Father. Well, that's some results, isn't it? All because of Jesus Christ. All because of this unspeakable gift. All because of this unspeakable love. We, if we put our faith and trust in Christ, can become his child. One of the greatest relationships you can have is to know for sure today that you're a child of God. I asked this morning, and I'll be fairly blunt, if you came in here today not knowing that you're a child of God, don't leave like that. Don't leave like that. Don't let another moment in your life go by not knowing you're a child of God. You can settle this today. At the end of our service, we'll have an invitation. We can take God's word. We can show you how you can be saved. We can show you in scripture how simply you put your faith and trust in him and what he's done. You ask him to be your Lord and Savior. And you can leave this place this morning totally transformed from when you came in. See, because when you came in without Christ, you were a sinner on your way to eternity in hell. But you can leave. Listen, you can leave a child of God on your way to eternal life. Think of that. If you're online this morning, you make that decision today. Call upon Christ to be your Savior. Become his child today. What unspeakable results. Now, as I said, Romans chapter 8, look now as we are his children. Romans chapter 8, and I'm going to go, let's go to, uh, I want to see, I want to back up just a little bit. Let's go to verse 10. Romans chapter 8 and verse 10. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh, Verse 12, for if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if, the, but if ye though live, the spirit do mortify the deeds of your body, ye shall live. Now look at verse 14 on here just for a bit. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears witness in our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, if so that we suffer with him that we may be glorified together. Listen, one of these unspeakable results is not only do we become a child of God, we become joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We are joint heirs. And look at the look at how that reads. Look at the progression in the scripture. Not that these things are timed out, but just look at this again. Uh, and, and we'll say verse 16. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Then look at the next part. And if children, then heirs of God. And it doesn't just stop there. And this is then joint heirs with Christ. We are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. You know what that means? You know what that means this morning? You know why this is an unspeakable uh, result? As joint heirs with Jesus Christ, we not just will be partakers of his inheritance. We are partakers of Jesus Christ's inheritance. We 
are joint heirs with the Savior of the world. If you're a child of God this morning, look at that result. We sing those songs, you know, join heirs with Jesus. Those are just words that we put to a nice tune and they mean something. They are positional in Jesus Christ. God the Father looks at his son. God the Father looks at us and based on our belief in Jesus Christ, we become in essence equal with Christ in his heirship, if you will. We are heirs with him. And I said, that just doesn't I happen someday. That's right now. Now, someday's coming, right? Yes. We're going to see what those glories of heaven are like one day. Amen. Cheers right now. Cheers right now. You don't have to see it. You don't have to touch it. You don't have to be there. Although we will be. The moment you received Jesus Christ, you became joint heirs with him. And everything that's his is yours and mine. Adopted into the family of God, even really a sense of better than adoption. Isn't that wonderful? Those wonderful results, as joint heirs with Christ, we are partakers of his inheritance. If we were really to contemplate that for a minute, we would then begin to use the words that you hear often in church. We could, as we begin to examine how that we are joint heirs with Christ, we could then begin to say, we could use words such as, we have been forgiven. We have been reconciled. We are redeemed. We are made righteous. We have been accepted. We have fellowship. All of these things because of our position in Jesus Christ. All of these things because we're a child of God. We're joint heirs with Jesus. As a joint heir with Jesus Christ, think about that for a minute. All of these words I just listed now apply to you. Because he is righteous, you are now declared righteous through his blood. Within you as a child of God rests the righteousness of Christ. As a child of God, when you go before his throne in prayer, when you spend time with your heavenly father, he sees his son, Jesus Christ, and he accepts you as his own son. By this unspeakable gift, by this unspeakable sacrifice and then we get to just partake in all the blessings of these unspeakable results we become a child of god we become joint heirs with jesus turn over to first john if you will First John chapter 5. Many of you may know these verses well, but I do believe that we want to touch on this morning as we have a moment ago, but I want to just elaborate a little bit more on one of our unspeakable results. First John chapter 5, if you would look at, we'll go to verse 10. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness of himself. That he believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave his Son. What's this record that it's talking about? Look at verse 11. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not 
life. Look at verse 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life and ye may believe on the name on the Son of God. It goes on in verse 14, and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Listen, if we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior, one of these results is we become partakers of eternal life. As I said a minute ago, before you were saved, we were on our way to hell. We were on our way of, each, of an eternity of punishment and separation. Separation from a holy God. You see, that's really what hell is all about. Yes, the Bible's clear. There, It is a place of torment. It is a place of fire. It says that it is a place where the worm dieth not and there's gnashing of teeth. And you can see those uh, uh, illustrated in scripture. The rich man crying out just for a, 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 a droplet of water to be placed on his tongue for relief. So not only is it just a place of punishment forever and ever and ever. But listen, my friend, what hell is really about, it's separation from a holy God for all eternity. You see, even right now, in the world we live in, how wicked it may be, how much sin there may be in it, there is still a presence of a holy God. Yes. That presence will not be in hell. You'll be separated from even the, 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 the very idea, the, the, the very wonderment of, as you could look out in our world today, or, or in the world today, and you could look up at the sky, and you could see creation, and all of these things that would point to a, a, a God of the universe. Hell is not like that, my friend. It's a place of torment. It's a place of separation. But, but, there was an unspeakable gift. But Jesus Christ laid his life down. Jesus Christ willingly died for you and I. And what we see in 1 John here, as we believe this record, we have eternal life. Amen. We're going to be able to live for all of eternity in the presence of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Think about that day. You get that glorified body. I don't care how old you are in this room, you could probably use a few new parts. <laughs> I know I could. Think about that. Some of you are really going to benefit from the glorified mind. <laughs> Get come quickly. Aren't that great results? We don't even know what it's we we can't even really contemplate what that is. We can't contemplate what a glorified body is. We can't contemplate what a glorified mind is to have a perfect mind. Absent of sin, absent from the presence of sin, absent from just the, the drawing of sin. Same thing with your flesh, a flesh that doesn't know sin, a flesh that isn't chained by sin. All of those things. That's, what awaiting, that's what's waiting you and I as his child. Amen. Being in the presence of our Savior for all of eternity. On top of that, then it just doesn't stop there, does it? He then says, here, here's this glorified body. Here's this glorified mind. Now enjoy all of eternity. Because there's really no such thing as the rest of eternity. That just hit me. That's pretty profound. It's all of eternity. Forever. 
That's an unspeakable result. All because of Jesus Christ. All because of his love. All because of the Father's love for you and me. Now I ask you again, have you received the gift? If you haven't today, settle that today. If you have, if you're in this room this morning, if you're listening online and you're a child of God, then you rejoice today. Yes, your, your week, your year, your life may have some trials in it. We all are going through things. But we are a child of God. And as a child of God, we receive unspeakable results. We are joint heirs with Jesus. We have an eternity waiting for us. Lord, come quickly. Friend, I want to challenge you with that thought as well. The Bible teaches very clear that no man knows the hour of the day that Jesus Christ will come back for his church, come back for his bride. But we believe that everything according to the scripture that needs to be fulfilled has been fulfilled. You see, the scripture even points to some things in the world that will be happening, how uh, just that there will be an unrest and more wickedness upon wickedness and, and many desiring to be, to be wise just follow after foolish things and unscriptural things. And listen, we are in that time, my friend. This world is not getting any better. And what I would say to you with that is, Jesus Christ is coming back. Amen. And I believe he's coming back quicker than later. I believe he's coming back sooner than later. I believe he could come back today. Right. Are you ready? Are you ready this morning? Again, if you don't know Christ, are you ready if he were to come back? Are you ready if that trumpet were to sound? See, so you better get ready. As a child of God, I would ask you, are you ready to meet your Savior? Is there something in your life that, man, if you stood before him today, you'd feel pretty uncomfortable about? Is there something in your life that if you stood before him today, you'd kind of hang your head in shame? Let's get ready. Let's get ready. There's unconfessed sin in your life. If there's something in your life that you're dealing with, get that right today. Put it here at this altar. Call upon the one who gives you strength and the authority over sin through his son, Jesus Christ. Ask God to help you. Ask God to give you the victory over some of these things you're struggling with. Grow in your Christian life. Grow in your Christian walk. Then when that day comes, it'll just be a day of rejoicing. It won't be a day of shame. It'll be a day of rejoicing. You're not going to have time when that trumpet sounds to say, oh, I'm not quite ready. That's not happening. But boy, I would sure hate to think we'd feel that way if we had that kind of time. Wouldn't you? You know, it says in the twinkling of an eye, it's that fast. There's no time for contemplation. There's no time for, wait a minute, Lord, forgive me. Be ready. Be ready. Let's leave here this morning, going into the new year next week, as we'll lay out some of our themes for the church and some great things we see God doing and expecting God to do. But let's leave here today knowing for certain that you're a child of God if you haven't already settled that. And then if you're a child of God this morning, leave here today ready to meet the one who saved you. Leave here today rejoicing in this unspeakable gift. Leave here today, today rejoicing in this unspeakable love. Leave here today just 
contemplating that unspeakable sacrifice, think about it. Let it resonate with you. And then leave here today rejoicing about these unspeakable results if you're his child this morning. Let's pray. Father, we love you so much. Lord, as we've taken time this morning and here over the last few weeks to look at this scripture and really to look at this unspeakable gift, your son, Jesus Christ, God, we are so thankful. We're so thankful, first and foremost, of your love in sending Christ. We're so thankful, Lord, for you first loving us, providing a way of salvation through your son, Jesus Christ. And Christ, we are so thankful for your sacrifice, for your willingness to lay your life down for us. God, this morning as we discuss today the results that you so freely reign upon us as we become your child, God, help us never, never to forget. Help us never to let these things draw cold in our hearts of the goodness of what you are to us. Father, this morning I pray if there's some here that need to settle some things, they need to just take care of some things this morning that your spirit would speak to their heart. Lord, this, this altar is not a place of shame. It's not a place of judgment. This altar, this time in our service is a place where we can do business with you. Lord, where we can take care of some of these things that your spirit has been speaking to our hearts about today. I pray for these that are here, Lord, that you would, Lord, give them the strength, Lord, the encouragement to do what you're calling them to do. With heads bowed and eyes closed, no one looking around this morning, please, as the pianist just softly begins to play. You heard a few things this morning. I'd like to start with one question, and that's, do you know for sure today that you're a child of God? Do you know for sure today where you would spend your, your, your eternity? You see, the Bible's very clear that that's only through Jesus Christ. That's only through your relationship with him. That's only through you receiving him as your savior. What I'd like to do this morning, if there's one here that has never received Christ as their savior, and you say, you know what? I don't want to put this off another day. I don't want to wait another minute. I want to take care of this today. Would you just slip your hand up nice and tall? I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call you out, but I do want to pray with you. I want to pray for you this morning that you could settle that today. Anyone here that say, Pastor Fisher, I came in today lost, but I want to leave a child of God. Pray for me. Anyone at all, give it just a minute here as I look around. Pray for me. I need to make Christ the Savior of my life today. I don't want to put it off another day. Yes, I see your hand. Let me put it down. Anyone else? Just for a minute. Christian, this next question is for you. Are you ready to see him? You understand you have these results. You understand the greatness of God and his blessings, but maybe there's just some things in your life right now that you need victory over. Maybe there's some things in your life that you're battling, whether it's, whether it's sin, whether it's just something you're struggling with spiritually. Now's the time to get those things settled. Go into this next year desiring to be more like Christ. Anyone here today say, Pastor Fisher, just pray for me. There are some things I'm struggling with. I do need some victories in my life, and I need God's help through those. Anyone like that, I'll pray for you as well. Yes, I see your hand. Yes, over here, I see your hand. Yes. Anyone else, just for a minute. I do need help in these things. I do need God's power for some of these victories in my life. Anyone else? Lord, bless this invitation. Be with these that raised their hand. Help them, Lord, to do business with you. Be with this one, Lord, as well, that raised their hand for salvation, that we could take care of that today. Father, we pray that here in a moment, as we have this invitation, Lord, that these would come and do business with you. 
Lord, let's settle these things this morning. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Mr. Dor